Hi. So it's past 10 o'clock, so I think I'll start. That's my email. Yay. And this talk is about UnCSE, which is not a new pass. It is a feature of comb Combine. Uh, uh, to explain what UnCSE does, we first need to know what CSE does. Uh, what CSE does is it takes. Uh, uh, well, well, this is all, this is all just on RTL. It's not on trees or anything. Uh, uh, you ta you take a bunch of instructions that compute something. Uh, another bunch of instruction that computes the whole, the whole same, completely same thing, and that you only compute it once and then you copy it. That's what CSE does. Uh, um, about 20 years ago, it was proposed to have an UnCSE in TCC. And I tried to find references to it, but. I don't know, maybe the archives don't go that far back or something. It's, well, I did find out that uh, uh, many people spelled UnCSE differently. They spelled UnCSE. So that, so that helps finding it. <laughs> uh, but, but in the end, nothing came of it anyway. Uh, and that was probably because... Uh, they wanted uh, UnCC to do too much. Uh, it, it should work for every pass. That was the idea back then. Because uh, many passes uh, would rather not have uh, stuff CSE for them. Would rather have the input uh, com completely separate for every comp computation. But many passes do want CSE. So there was the idea to uh, run CSE for every pass or something, but I'm not going to do that. I'm only doing it for combine. But you could, of course, do the same thing in a fee order pass. Yes. Yeah. So there are many places in the current source code that talk about UnCSE, about 50 places even. Uh, and they usually mean undo anything that CSE has done. But uh, CSE then means uh, the CSE.C or .cc or whatever pass, uh, which does a whole lot more than CSE. So what that UnCSE means is not clear. But anyway, uh, wherever the source code talks about UnCSE, they mean undoing something that CSE did. It does not mean to uh, do the complete opposite of CSE. And that is what uh, my UnCSE does. But we'll get to that. Yeah. So all common sub-expressions will not be factored out anymore. They'll just be duplicated as many times as they are used. Which, which, which makes uh, transforms, uh, later transforms easy, right? Like, like uh, combine can in all cases just combine that one instruction it has because it won't be used anywhere else. So that's easy. Yep. Uh, I, I don't feel good uh, just reading stuff I wrote down. Uh, it's rather talk about stuff. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, so, so you get more freedom by not looking at the old stuff. Well, you are looking at the old stuff, but you don't have to use all those old decisions because nothing is CSE'd anymore. So that's CSE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is pretty much a pseudocode for the whole NCC pass, actually. Uh, you just look at all instructions. Uh, instruction has to set one pseudo, not the hard register, because hard registers are always very complex to deal with. Uh, because you, you, they have an in, uh, infinite lifetime, basically. And uh, they, also, they also have to be the only setter of that pseudo, which usually we have, but we, there still are cases uh, uh, where the same, same pseudo is actually set. Sorry. You need a lot more memory operations when you do that. Huh? Well, when you, you ran something from memory once, and you would have various different expressions. Uh, replicate memory operation. Even if it was only once in the source, it was replicated. Uh, uh, everything is in registers. Nothing is in memory ever. Well, if the programmer says, reads this from memory, and uh, do an additional set and a replication to something else, yeah. then you, you, according to this rule, you end up replicating the load. Yes, but that's not the problem. Uh, all those extra loads will eventually be getting rid of as well. But we'll get to that. Well, it seems like the, the whole point you're saying are used to have higher degrees of freedom. There, there should be a microphone somewhere in here so I can hear you guys as well. Oh, here, here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, it, it seems like the, the core idea you're trying, you're trying to get to here is it gives you more degrees of freedom. Yes. Once you have a yes. single setter, many user. And that, that right. applies to combined, it applies to the register allocators, all kinds of places. That, that, that seems to be the key goal you're going towards here, correct? Yeah. Great. I just want to make sure that was clarified. Yeah. And then... Uh, Uh, well, well uh, I've really got to show the rest of the stuff first, but uh, then in the end, uh, uh, we're getting rid of all those extra copies, okay, and making things run again. Not in all cases. There are cases where things are actually lost, but not, not many, not many. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and that, that last thing and can be duplicated at all. That's it. Uh, just a function, RTL function, which says instruction can be copied, whatever it's called. Which is, which is pretty important. <laughs> if it says you're not supposed to copy something, you get really interesting results if you do it anyway. And so we have uncsed everything. Like no normal pseudo is set more than once anymore. And it's pseudos, it's not hard registers. If hard registers are set, set more than one, once, then so be it, right? Uh, and then the normal combined work is well, as, uh, exactly as always. And then after everything is done, I do a re-CSA pass with CSE things again. Uh, well, I, I say pass, but you could call it a sub-pass or something of combining. It's not a pass, it's just a function. So it's not the, the old C, you're not rewriting the, the 
existing CFC, you feel more like a cleanup. Yeah. Thing. Well, it actually is existing CFC. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, I, I had kept track of, of what uh, NCSE had done to what pseudos and stuff, and uh, what instructions it started with, and where it copied it, all the new instructions, right? All the new pseudos as well. And then trying to undo it when. Uh, it hadn't done anything useful with the copies, but this didn't work so well. I worked on that for weeks and weeks and weeks, but it never works well. Uh, if it did it somewhat differently, you hit very different problems again. Yeah. Well, this didn't work out so well, right? And if you have an uninitialized loop counter, so which is, if you have an uninitialized loop counter, which is used then, after then the loop, a, then you have a bug in your source code because that's not valid C, right? An initialized loop counter. Or what do you say? Give an example. Um, um, for semicolon i plus equals yeah. one um, semicolon um, after the closing phrase and then um, return i and then this algorithm would um, duplicate this uh, i plus plus mm -hmm. uh, because it's used both for the return and for the i plus plus and then it would duplicate the R plus plus again because it's well it doesn't it doesn't work on your source code, right? It works on the RTL that's there right then. And combine is pretty much the last RTL pass there is. So you you have pretty much the finished RTL already. Well, uh, the combined thing isn't done yet, and here is some extra stuff done all the way at the end. But yeah. So I, was, I still don't understand your question. Well, the, the algorithm seems to uh, allow indefinite duplication. Of instructions. So no, never indefinite. Get in it's, it's always finished because uh, at well, as far as I know, the amount of RTL you get as input to combine is finite always, right? <laughs> it's just a certain number of instructions. No, but if you have one instruction that feeds two other instructions, and one of them is itself, no, it cannot be. That can never be. Uh, in, in combine, you always work in an extended basic block. So there are no infinite loops or anything. It's, it's, it's just a deck actually to, to direct that ice a cyclic graph. Right. Yeah. So when you say multiple users, you mean, you mean only multiple users within the same basic block? Within the basic block, extended basic block, okay. yes. And you have that often. In many cases, you have multiple users. And it is often useful to CSE stuff, a computation. But uh, uh, you also uh, want to combine the result of that still, combine it with some extra instruction, right? And then in the current code, uh, uh, like if it's used twice, right? And uh, uh, for one use, you can co combine an extra instruction into it. Uh, then you need to copy the original as well. And that causes problems. Uh, like uh, if pre previous TCC release. Yeah. Sorry? Oh. N not anymore, right. So, so this was the first problem. Uh, 
uh, keep track of what UNCSE has done and undo it if it wasn't useful. What is useful, right? That, if that already is a problem. So now what I do at the end for the VCSE is to do an actual full CSE. I can't hear you. Just within the extended basic book. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah, so it's this. So if he's just in an EBB, he's not going to do all the path yeah. following craziness that we do in CSE that is so bloody expensive. So, yeah. Yeah. And in proud historical fashion, all this CSE is done 100% from scratch. Like, uh, in only the RTL, we have five and a half CSE implementations. And we don't have any actively good CSE implementation. We need to do something about it. Yeah, uh, the, I, I, the CSE that's in there is is from the Stallman era. Right. CSE is is literally thirty plus years old. Right. And it's it's. I'm not sure if it ever got converted to CSE lib. Um, we, we use that a lot in Sketch and, and debug info and all kinds of places, right. never in CSE itself. Right, I'll get to that. <laughs> uh, and there's, there's also, uh, well, I count GCSE as one of the CSE implementation, but that is completely different things. That's partial redundancy elimination. Really. This is way more important, but yeah. So I actually use CSE lib. So the source code I get is like 15 lines, half of which are comments, so yeah. And uh, no other use of CSE lib uh, that I found uh, actually does CSE. Although it's called CSE lib, it's uh, well, it, it it does find uh, corner sub expressions, but it doesn't get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. CSE. Hmm? CSE. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, CSE lab does very many things that are not very CSE. That does value numbering stuff and whatever. And that that hack where uh, you sometimes have to keep I two. Well, I two is uh, well in the end in combine you always. Co usually combine two instructions, one is called I2 and one is called I3. And then at some point in time, uh, there could be a third instruction as well, it's, it's called I1. And since, I don't know, 10 years or something, there can be four instructions are called I0. So I hope no one ever makes it for five instructions because then we have I minus one. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I, I talked about that right now, right? Uh, sometimes you need, uh, uh, need to keep the original I2 as well, make a copy of it. And that was a big problem because uh, uh, the way combine works, the way it uh, uh, works the statements, and rework statements if something changed, then it can rework statement. The, uh, the whole algorithm became very much not linear. It's, it's more like actual third power, I think, which is pretty bad if your basic block is big. A third power is not good. Yeah, that was the trigger which made me do this whole UNCSE. But uh, UNCSE is 
much more useful and nice and interesting without looking at that bug, right? Uh, and CSC was originally about 20 years ago proposed. 30 Who? 30 plus. Really? It was in the to-do list when I started doing GCC. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But the first time I saw it was about 20 years ago. So it was some revival of, the, of it on the mailing list again. Yeah. Okay. I, I actually saw that to-do list in old commits and stuff. And mostly people just want to delete the uh, historical thing, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the thing is, and CSE was never implemented at that time, which was not the original, original first time it was proposed, apparently. Uh, uh, and they wanted to do one, one pass that does in CSE. But uh, it's, it should be uh, un CSE and re CSE should be around many passes. So, the, uh, because it pretty much changes the re representation of your data, of your, uh, uh, what you call, uh, uh, instruction stream. So, so, the optimization in your pass can handle it better. So, what next? Yeah, my tax file stops here, but yeah, I cannot predict the future. It's problematic, yeah. Uh, well, an uh, uh, obvious thing that could be done is I do this only in combined, but you can do the same thing in all optimization partners. So, there must be more passes that rather have uh, CSC not run almost all the stuff. Oh? If your optimization works better without CSC being done, then uh, doing an CSC at the start of your optimization pass should help. Uh, of course, the, uh, what's next things that's always next for combine is to uh, try to do better stuff with it. Yeah, go on. So um, I, I didn't want to stop you about talking about the future, uh, but I have a question about the, the un-CSE. Yeah. I think the re-CSE is quite obvious what you're doing. If you just run CSE, I mean, that's... There's no question. So uh, when you work on the extended basic block, when you have a pseudo that has uses outside of the basic block, you're not going to copy it? No. Even if it has multiple uses inside, yeah. right? Okay. So you're copying the other ones. What, what do you do to, on, on the costing side of Combine? Do you, do, do you have any changes there to account for the copy that's then combined into a yeah. separate instruction, but that may overall have still a cost that was not there before because it was CSE. Uh, I don't need to do need to do anything about it, right? Uh, so originally you have one instruction that is cost for most instructions. Uh, so you have a copy to lots of copies, all of them cost for. And some of them uh, will combine with other instructions with the same cost trade-off as always, right? And then uh, uh, when you hit real CC, those, those can be copied together again. Well, that's not exactly my question because you're not doing any costing of the un -CSE because it would, of course, not be profitable to duplicate it. But, but there is no cost. Uh, you, 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 make, you make exact copies of everything, so what is executed will be exactly the same. I don't see it. Well, that's, that's not quite true. So in case you have a pattern in the back end that can do multiplication and add, and 
uh, you have a pattern that can do the add, yeah. and the add is used by some other instruction as well. So you have to execute that. And you copy that, and then you combine it into that special. Oh, OK. And, okay. And, and, and if that's more costly, you are not accounting for the fact that yeah. the instruction will still be there. Right, right. Uh, uh, some of the copies will be combined with other instructions, and some won't be. So there you get uh, the, the cost twice, right. Uh, there is just increasing register pressure. Because you've now got more live values. Oh, you, you, you do. If you calculate once, and the original source value is dead, then you still have yeah. to register. If you do the calculation so I'm, distribution, yeah. sometimes you've now got both the input and the output live, so you've got two live registers. Yeah, so it's, it's sorry, sorry yeah. Richard, but, but the register pressure is, is something completely different, and I don't think Combine looks at register pressure at all, like many passes in GCC, so it's just about the cost of the executed instruction. So in, in case you have the one add and you have three different multiplies that consume the add, so now you are now duplicating the, the add three times and combine it three times, but the sum of the combinations may be more expensive than the separate right. multiplication and the single right. addition. So you're not accounting for that because you think it's probably not happening very often? Or? I, I, I didn't see it ever being actually more expensive in the end. But it could be, theoretically, yes. So, so I, I think the existing code that keeps track of the fact when the I2 needs to be preserved, I think that takes that into account in some weird way? It's in some weird, weird, weird way, yes. Okay. Uh, it, uh, it does add in the cost of I2, yes. But not, it's not very smart about it. Yeah. And so you usually count it as cost zero, essentially. Yeah. So, so you're not also doing that, what the old code did, but you're just yeah. ignoring it. Okay. And then I have a second question. Yeah. So in case you have some very degenerate case where basically the first instruction is used by every other instruction. Please write a completely degenerate case so I can actually test the stuff with it, yes. So, so did, did you place into the copying logic anything like, if there are more like five uses, well, don't duplicate? Or did you, didn't you didn't put any magic number in there to limit it just because of the possibility? Make it square to everything. You, you can make it a new param. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Magic no. I'd rather not have no params, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I might have to limit it, yes. I did not see any source where uh, any pseudo is actually used more than five or six times. Uh, so, so, so that's not degenerate yet. But certainly you can, you can write something, yeah. yeah. So, and I, I think the, the third question I had, it's probably already answered. So you said, the old combine was able to take, to deal with multiple uses of I2, yeah. kind of. So I was thinking. Well, it's 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 still it still uh, does, but uh, does exactly that thing. But I think I can delete that now. That's one of the what next things, right? Yeah. So um, I uh, I when initially I thought. Well, are you really ex doing explicit copies and adjusting all the users and stuff? That feels like a lot of work. So why not make combine during the analysis when it builds the lock link, pretend that you've copied and basically only copy when you really need it? Have, have you ever read the combine code? Yes, I, I did. It's complex uh, it's, enough already. Uh, yeah, sure. And, and uh, so when I, when I did my share on that compile time back of analysis yeah. and trying to fix it, um, I thought, well, it's time to go through combine and basically rewrite it. And because of yes. these issues, like, like get rid of, maybe we don't but, have in, in. But we have people trying to rewrite combine from scratch, like every few years or something, the whole forward prop thing, right? Or we got something uh, uh, like two years ago, I think. 
or, or did as you, well. This year we got the late combine. Yeah, late combine, but late combine should not be called late combine because it is not combined. It's it's late forward prop. Hmm? It's late forward prop. If yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the salient feature of combine is you start with a bunch of instructions, any instructions, and you combine them together algebraically, whatever, whatever that RTL actually means, right? You combine them together completely blindly, and then you see what you end up with is an existing, existing stuff on your target machine. It's completely bl blind, it tries out everything, and it has many, many cases, uh, many ways to make the result be nice for the machine. If the machine does not, if it's not really recognized for your machine, to change it a little bit. Like for, exa for example, if the expression you get is uh, is not recognized for your machine. It will break break it up into two instructions, and it well it has a whole lot of heuristics for it where to break up the expression, and it tries only one possibility. If that's the problem with heuristics, but it would be way too expensive to try out all possibilities. So it's a good thing it doesn't. Uh, it but only does that. It's no split lab. Hmm? It only does that if there's no split pattern. If no, it, it does it if there is no split pattern. If there is an explicit split pattern in the machine description, it will do, it will use that. Yes. yes but if the, but if there is not, yeah, it will just try try out stuff. Right. Yeah, and it quite often actually works or is is act, is actually used in the end. Quite often, surprisingly often, I say. It's, yeah. So, so to to come back to my my last comment. So I was uh, when I when I was trying to understand what combine does. Yeah. Um, I, I figured that it might be a good idea to replace how it walks over the instructions with yeah. uh, with with how it it as you said restarts after a combination right. to find more opportunities. Right. And I would guess that that all the complexities with dealing with multiple users and maybe on-demand copying are related to how it sets up the iteration, how it computes the log links and all the management of... Well, the, the whole log links thing is really very old from GCC1 or something, right? Uh, uh, and Combine still uses it, but it doesn't need to. It computes its log links directly itself from the data flow. Yeah. So it could, I, I use, could just use all data flow directly everywhere. But that's a big project for me anyway. I probably should, but yeah. Uh, there is no direct thing to gain by, by doing it. So, the, so like by, by changing the iteration, the, the repeated iteration over the instruction stream into an iteration over a work yeah. list of possible combined Destinations, right. basically. Would you, if, if somebody else would do that, would you be open to accept this kind of change? Of course, of course. Well, I mean, yes, it, yes. It's, it's, it's kind of your baby and you're basically the gatekeeper of any change to combine. I, I want to make it nice, make it perform well. It's already the, the single optimization pass that has, uh, that has the, most, the biggest result. Before I did anything to combine, right? It was already this. So, uh, uh, but it's it's it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't uh, absorb everything else, right? It's, it's, well, well, it would me mean we don't have to call it GCC anymore. We can just call the compiler compi the whole compiler combine. Okay, yeah, <laughs> can do that. Uh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I've just one sorry, question. Sorry, minute, minute. Uh, a big problem with how uh, Combine works over the instructions is it, uh, it has a UID of every instruction. Well, the UID, it, uh, some special UID it made up itself, whatever. 
and it knows the oldest instruction it still wants to look at, and it knows the newest instruction it still wants to look at. And in the end, newest works all the way to the end. Uh, but that's completely ignoring all the actual dependencies. And uh, uh, it's sorting everything in a linear order, and that's not uh, how the dependencies work. It's, yeah, go on. So just to be a little bit controversial here, Combine was written in the days when the compiler started by yes. immediately lowering tree directly into RTL. Yeah. And our optimization passes relied on things like CSE and then Combine because yes. we expanded into a very, very simple instruction set and then tried to combine the hell out of it to get back to something useful. Now that we it, have it, all, it, all... Let me finish the section, yeah, please. Sorry. Um, now, now that we have all the modern Gimple optimizations, which do all the things like CSE before we yeah. even start expanding, isn't the real problem that our expand pass is doing a poor job now, and we no, should be no doing problem. things better during expand so we don't need combine. Nowadays, what combine does is uh, use the best machine instructions, is make the end result, the end code you have, the machine code that's eventually generated almost directly after a combine, right? Make it use the best machine instruction possible. That's, yeah. that's yes, what combine does. If we, did, if we did better expansion, we wouldn't need combine because expand would essentially expand, find these ex, better instructions. Expand is earlier. the very first RTL pass. Because, our, because our, our expand was written a long time ago. That's true. The expand, the way expand works, well, some things in expand certainly shouldn't be done. I mean, over time, we've added new Gimple or expand rules that, and um, you know, uh, opt-up opt entries to try yeah. and work around some of these limitations. But the problem is still fundamentally that we yeah. expand into poor RTL yes. and then have to do a hell of a lot of work to right. get back to something useful. Uh, uh, but we, yes, but it was written in the days before we had Gimple. Gimple does most of those optimizations like proper CSE you know, used, to, used to try and do. Um, which was one of the reasons. It, it doesn't, but I'd argue that Combine doesn't really either. <laughs> it, ha it has some tables which it looks at which are supposed to give it an idea, but they're not brilliant. Yeah. I, I'm being a bit controversial here. <laughs> so isn't, it, isn't it the case that um, the fact that Combine exists means that we keep a lot of complexity out of Expand? And the expand is handwritten and combine is table driven. Combine is pretty much uh, the last thing in the RTL pipeline, right? So it's sweeping up all of the stuff that everything before it didn't do, right? So it, it does all of the low hanging fruit, basically. That's the main reason uh, it has such a big part of the. Uh, actual optimization in the end. The weak online is basically at the end. Yeah. At the end, to me, combine is actually helping choose the best instructions. So it is acting as instruction selection fundamentally. Right, right, very much. Now, if we want to move that to expand or think but, about it there, then. Um, we need far more infrastructure to deal with that. Yeah, you, and we you, had you, a number of projects that have failed. Well, the, the other thing that's missing in that building is if we try to do instruction selection and expansion, you're going to struggle to see expressions across statements. Right. Yeah. And but that is a, that's a key problem. problem. So it should happen. Right. So I spent you know a decade trying to get to the point where we could just take out um, jump threading and CSE hmm. on the theory that Gimbal should be able to do those two, that narrow set. And guess what? It's bloody hard. <laughs> so yeah. so the other part is if we bind too early, we don't get to see those expressions yeah. because the machine has made that decision about the multiplier accumulate yeah. way too early. Then... 
you know, we, we have the problems with forming the best MLAs, always. We have that problem with FMRE association too early at Gimpo, and we have the challenge again. So this thing is, is a hard problem. I don't see yeah. so, the solution. So there is no single RTL pass that does instruction selection. There is uh, instant cost. With the last part where you manage to get that selection baked in to some extent if, uh, is combined. Right, right, sure. Construction cost. We sure. have progressive lowering from... But, 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 the, but the thing that actually does the instruction selection is the costing of the instructions. And if you, you actually use an instant cost and have it correctly implemented for your target and you don't use RTX cost because RTX cost sucks, it's... Oh, it sucks if the target makes it suck. Well, it's, it's not something... Uh, well, it's costing uh, RTs, right? RT, RTXs, expressions. It's costing expressions. Expressions don't, cook, don't cost anything. What should it cost? If you it can cost instructions, but you can also give it a piece of instructions, but it works better if you get through the yeah. instruction. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, I, I, well, uh, I created instant cost, right? Like, I don't know, three years ago or something. Uh, and I converted many passes to use instant cost, not RTX cost. There's still some stuff left, but uh, nothing that's used very much, I think, I hope. And I of course, I didn't touch any target that does it, right? It's so, uh, so are we weeds over here? I think yeah, so back to the, the, the instruction selection. So I think yeah. we, we do some we do recognize instructions at RTL expansion. So after RTL sure. expansion you have instructions selected. Those are not the final instructions that will yeah. eventually get yeah. assembled. And and the point about doing stuff on Gimple is more like to make the the translation from Gimple to RTL as straightforward as possible. Like, you know, right. you see the gimbal, you know the optap, and you generate the instruction from the optap or do some magic to find an optap. But with, together with the TER, uh, one of my favorites, the, the RTL expansion code also does some, something that also combined us. It, it tries to combine expressions in that case because it was from generic times. And that complexity if we want to preserve it, we, we kind of need to preserve it at the same point, or we can can uh, completely get rid of that and hope combined will take it, but it, that doesn't work for some reason. I tried yeah. that. That would be the simplest solution. So the, the new, new idea is to, to move those instruction selection parts to Gimple, and we've done that for multiple things and, and what we end up is basically adding new optaps for the instructions that we want to recognize at RTL expand yeah. in time and generate internal functions corresponding to the optap at Gimple, basically, so that we can, we have selected the optap we want to use for the RTL expansion. Right. Right. So it's almost like a free instruction selection. Yeah. It, it, it guides the rest of RTL on how to look at and, and later drive a copy propagation. Yeah. That kind of stuff is still going to show up, but, but I think what you're talking about it really is a pre instruction selection. Yeah, we, it, it's, it's basically, well, we, we, could, we could also go to the way uh, when we expand RTL, RTL, we don't need the RTL to be recognizable. We leave that to a later stage. That would be the other option, right? Why would we need to choose an instruction at that point when we are going to mangle it back and forth anyway? But I mean, we, we do that. There's so we do that, there. right? <laughs> and, 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 and on the topic from, of like uh, removing CSE, I would guess we can remove GCSE instead. You because know, you, might, you might actually be right there. I hadn't thought about because that. Because CSE is, is really working on the RTL level. It, it sees things Gimple doesn't see. Like you can't have constants in instructions as immediates, the floating point immediates, which are happily sitting on Gimple statements, but are usually never sitting on yeah. actual machine instructions and all this stuff. So the local CSE, I don't see that we can get, get rid of that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think the only useful thing that GCSE does is 
deal with artifacts like PLT accesses, which we only uh, expose at, at RTL. So Gimple can't uh, place the, the get, get me the thing pointer calls and stuff like that. Uh, so that's the only thing where GCSE still does useful things. It's still used in those bits of the um, the tree that aren't handled by Gimple, like um, setting up call parameters. All of that is sort of fairly opaque because the the Gimple doesn't know what the the uh, the ABI is. So any, anything that gets spilled on the stack, it can't it can't it doesn't know how to handle that. Uh, well, some of it, some of it might, if the calls with it from within a loop. Yeah, I mean, you, you might find some PRE stuff, but I think Richie's actually on the side. Um, I, you know, Richie, I, the more I think about it, I don't think GCSE on the RTL side is doing much anymore. Anyway, I think this is this is viable of a test. Yeah, I mean, Gimple should be handling almost all that stuff. And I say that having you know worked with Doug's original pass and, and what's in there now is a lot of mine. I'm not just I'm just not sure there's so much value in there. It is it is great to do loading but loading labels is not that important. It just isn't. It is how, many, how often do we take the address of a label in, in the real world? It's great to do as much as you can in Gimbal. But in the end, the actual machine code, anything that transforms to actual machine code, should be done on RTL because it's much, much better fit. Well, there is this proposed uh, lower gimbal or something, but that could, that could be used instead. Sure. But it, it needs to not lose as much as whatever was proposed proposed until now does. Yeah, so I, I think lower gimbal is just kind of an excuse to do things on gimbal that that we usually did on RTL. Yeah. And it's it's the, the, the whole purpose of saying well there's also low gimbal would be that we do that fairly late okay. to not disturb like earlier generic passes with all kind of internal functions mapping to special instructions because they would have to understand all these instructions to do like reassociation right. or whatever. You want to do that on a, a more abstract level. And yes, of course. So we are basically so, so doing low gimbal at the point we are doing this yeah. instruction selection pass. So, so in RTL, in the instruction string, between any two, any two passes, every single instruction has to pass recognize, record. Every single instruction, and that is hugely important. Uh, and you don't have something like that uh, in Gimple. Well, you you do, you, but you have uh, you just pretend you can do all your normal operations. Yeah, right? it's, it's it's a little bit of of a Frankenstein in Gimple because, like, yeah. after so we have various lowering passes that try to guarantee that after that pass. Only yeah. supported Gimple instruction, whatever that is, are in the IL. Like after vector lowering, you're not supposed to have vector instructions that are not expandable via right. the opt Right, right. Right. Yeah. And the slippery slope there is you end up recreating RTL and an inability to predict what is coming into any Gimple pass. You, you, well, that is a slippery slope. Yeah. yeah. So one of the first things RTL does is expand, of course. Uh, and for some tokens, some of the standard codes are expanded to hugely expensive instruction sequences, but that's only at expand time, so all of the later passes uh, can try to make it better. <laughs> and sometimes they actually succeed in that. Yeah. Uh -huh. We've got a lot of questions here. I'm not sure we've got any answers. Yeah. <laughs> Throw it to all the way and stuff. Yeah, well, anyone, you put the bomb in there. <laughs> I find from Vino, it's actually too high level to do instruction selection. You just, I find combine is often too high level to do instruction selection. You can just it it's doesn't sort of a do. statement of intent what you try to do, but if you have it not also going to register sets, you do the actual 
instruction selection later in the register allocator or in people too. Combine never does instruction selection. Never, ever, ever. It always, 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 always makes one single instruction for whatever it started with. It tries only one thing. It cannot, cannot back anything out. It makes decisions and that's it. And that's also problematic, but yeah. Within that fact, ended up narrowing the instruction selection to a single pattern and then the alternatives yeah. kick in and the register allocator comes along. Well, effectively... It's, it's a grayscale that goes through the... Effectively, it does some instructions, yes. Uh, it combines some instructions and if it then ends up with something that costs more than it started with, yeah. it decides not to combine them. Yes, that you can see that as kind of instruction selection. Sure. That is what I mean by the instruction. Right, the right. pattern is selected in right. the description. Right. And then the exact one is decided based on what the register allocator decides. So right. instruction selection is a grayscale in the RTL pipeline anyway. Yeah. So if we want to go to you know traditional instruction selection, we've got to think about well, re architecting the thing. But coming back to the GCSE question, I, I had one thought, which might be slightly wacky. We now have RTL SSA. Does it make sense to rewrite GCSE in RTL SSA only for the portions that we care about, like the PLT stuff that you were talking about, Richard? It's a wacky idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a very simple yes. Um, SSA is, is well suited for what um, is done in CSE and those kinds of paths. It, it is very easy. It's a much easier structure to build. Um, the CSE we've got so, is... So, so will that just make the code better then to use RTL SSA? Will that make the code nicer? Or, or will it also give better results? Maybe. I, I, the, 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 the hesitation I have is I just haven't worked much with RTL SSA. Yeah. So there may be quirks that I'm unaware of, but conceptually SSA is incredibly well suited for CSE. That's the conceptual idea I'm coming from. I've not worked or dealt with RTL SSA. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, I haven't done any significant CSE work in decades. It, it, that, that passes a mess. Um, we have speculated for many years that CSE and Combine are both much better structured SSA, SSA passes. And when we were looking at RTL SSA, that was kind of the goal was, can we do RTL SSA and then re-implement CSE and Combine on top of that? Um, we yeah. didn't get far enough along with it, and it became clear that what we now know as Gimple or Tree SSA in the past was a faster path to an SSA-based framework. And so that's why we moved that focus to Tree SSA. Um, with the introduction of RTL SSA, I think it is worth some time to look at and see what RTL passes are better formed with that framework. But I don't think a lot of people here have used that framework very much. And so we don't have a good sense of how problematical that will be in practice. If we look at late combine, the, you know, one of the few passes that is using RTL SSA, it's a very simple pass. Yeah. That should tell us something. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it won't help combine because no one is going to rewrite combine. It Ooh. should it would have helped combine, yes. There may be things you can carve out. Hmm? Com there may be things about combine we can start to carve out into. Oh sure, that. sure. Yes. Our combine does so much stuff. There's value range right. propagation, there's bit right, right, propagation, right. all that stuff formulates fantastically well in SSA. And it does some, some things that are like 10% of the code in number of lines, which are always detrimental to your actual performance. So I should just remove those, right? But yeah. And someone put that in for a reason, right? At some point it helped, but it's not documented in the code what the, in the code what it really is trying to do. Yeah, it's just it's, a forgetting pass. It, it very much it's, so. It's not well. But, well, but it, it, it dates from a time when we didn't do tests every every commit. So there's a bunch of code there. We don't know what it's supposed to exercise anymore. 
We have no idea. There's a lot of our test people. I have no, like, no idea what they're actually testing. Yeah, yeah this is true. <laughs> they the parts that they used to do. <laughs> many, <laughs> many are like that. <laughs> but, but, the, but the thing... Yeah, I, I, I put a board in. I just call a board when I want to know, does this ever trigger? Does it abort? Yeah. If it triggers, then you have to come up with a test case. Exactly. I, I've been doing that for years. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I tell every, everyone of my junior years the same trick. But the thing you say that uh, combine is spaghetti code. Uh, well, combine is one. So I didn't say one for code, I said it was a spaghetti pass. Because right. you're trying to do too many things in one go. It's, try, it's trying to do only one thing. But it's, it's trying to, as soon as you try to split it separate passes, you get a pass ordering problem. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is not this is nothing new, um, but there are pieces I think probably can be split out. If you think about the sure. the, the sign extension tracking. Certainly. What is certainly. Oh, the the whole uh, value thing in uh, well, it's not in combined, but it's just really the only use, huh? which uh, keeps track of. Uh, if something if something is extended or not, that kind of stuff. Uh, I forget what it's called. It's few letters, RCP or something like it. I don't know. Uh, and it's usually problematic. So I want what I want it called. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Before, uh, huh? It probably still does something. Yes, it, it certainly still does something. It's uh, uh, used a lot for uh, actual good good. That's, that, that's the plan for actual good decisions. But because the data isn't so good, the decisions aren't so good either. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We are on time. Yeah. So thank you all for listening.